everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot La Mode. And today on Hot La Mode, we are going to be going through this V logo signature book by Valentino. Now, we here in Hot La Mode are very big fans of Valentino, like we stand a Pier Paolo experience. Now, Pier Paolo has utilized his haute couture collections to pretty much galvanize the Valentino brand to a much younger audience. And he's sort of shown that the brand doesn't have to be important because of the set of the fashion show or the models that walk in it or even the celebrities that are sitting in the front row. It can actually really truly be about the clothing and the clothing exclusively. So when Valentino asked me to review this V logo signature book. I was a little bit, you know, questionable because sponsorship with fashion brands isn't really my thing. And now this is a hashtag sponsored video. Let me just put it out there. But at the same time, I couldn't necessarily pass up going through understanding and looking at the reinterpretations of the V logo, which is a quite historical signature from the brand. I mean, it's been around since the 1960s. Now, the book is a collaboration between Pier Paolo Piccioli, who we have mentioned is the creative director of Valentino and 16 different publications to actually reinterpret and freely interpret the V logo in their own ways. And then to have Pier Paolo sort of reinterpret their reinterpretations of his interpretation of the V logo. I know it's kind of complicated, but we'll get into it. A little bit of a backstory about the V logo before we start breaking down the book is the fact that Pier Paolo introduced his version of the V logo during the spring 2019 menswear collections. And in reality, he considers it a quote, bootleg of the original Valentino V logo logo, which was introduced by Valentino Garavani in 1968 during his Scala Bianca collection. I mean, listen, the logo has been around for quite some time, although in different aspects. I mean, Jackie Kennedy Onassis loved a bit of a V logo. She was obsessed with it. You couldn't get it off her, apparently. Now, Pier Paolo has reinterpreted the V logo into bags and belts and shoes and jewelry and even garments. I mean, listen, you might not notice it, but I'm actually wearing wearing a V logo coat right now. There's a little bit of a V coming up my lapels and the circle or oval that sort of enraptures the V is all around my coat. And that's sort of the thing that I like about Pier Paolo's idea of branding. It's not like a monogram that's in your face and over the top and on every product. In my opinion, the V logo is something that speaks very softly to those that know its history and entices those that want to get to know it. So let's get into this. V logo signature book. The book sort of starts out by explaining a little bit about why Pier Paolo wanted to reinterpret the V logo. And essentially Pier Paolo says, how can we translate the composite history and the identity of Maison Valentino in an immediate, precise, universal, and unmistakable manner? And in a way, I kind of respect it. It's not saying, oh, we'd like to make sure that everybody knows about it. Something else that I love is that the book actually tries to break down what the meaning of a logo is and why it's kind of important. The book says, what we usually call a logo in reality is an abbreviation of logo type. I feel like I'm reading you all a story in the library. From the Greek logos or word and typos, letter, a word that becomes a symbol and therefore a symbol that turns into a story. And if that's not what a logo is meant to be for a fashion brand, well, I don't actually know what it's meant to be then. The other great thing about this book is that it really does show that Valentino allowed the publications to actually interpret it from their own interpretations. It's not like Valentino was hovering over them saying, you must do this, you have to do it this way. It even says in the book, 16 magazines have re-semanticized the commercial purpose of the logo with an iconoclastic twist in free visual associations and photographic and artistic freedom. And like, they're not just writing that or typing that, like they actually allowed it to happen. Now we do get a full sort of picture of the V and I guess maybe we should explain the V a little bit. We're putting it on screen so you're seeing it. Now one side of the V, the left side, has a quite firm and bold and strong sort of line while the other is a little bit more simple. It's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit cleaner. I don't know if that's like a reinterpretation of Valentino, the brand where it is quite firm and bold and out there, but it also maybe has a little bit of a subtle nature to it as well. And then it's all sort of enraptured in this 
oval-esque sort of style, but allows the V to be a bit open. I don't know if that's like reinterpreting the idea of freedom. It has a branding image that sort of encircles it, but there's still the ability for new ideas and new interpretations to come through with it. I don't know, maybe I'm just reading a lot into logos, but that's what I think of it. I also love a little bit of a fashion sketch from a designer. I do think it's one of my favorite forms of artistic interpretation. Like I'd love to actually own quite a few of Pier Paolo's sketches from his haute couture collection. That would be very hot, but it's actually really cool to see Pier Paolo actually sketch out the V logo and all of the illustrations in this book are actually by Pier Paolo himself, which is really cool too. The first publication that interpreted the logo that we're seeing is actually O32C. And there is this really magical photo of two dogs with the V logo sort of in capturing them. But also one dog has a V logo belt wrapped around its neck in sort of like a collar form. And now I do know on the Valentino website, there are pet accessories for sale. This is not for sale. And now I feel like my dog needs a Valentino V logo collar. That would be very hot. People might think his name is Victor. I'll rename him Victor if it has to happen. Sorry, Henry. Now, the other dog in the actual photo is sort of sitting on top of one of the Super V bags by Valentino. Now, listen, I got one of those cute little bags. I believe that we saw these from one of Pier Paolo's women's wear collections, but it does actually have the V logo here. And like, I have to say, this shit is heavy in the best way possible. Like this little gold V, she's thick. Damn boy, he's thick. She feels like 14 carat and I like it. Next up, 10 Magazine actually shot a bunch of the V sling bags as well as V logo shoes. And the thing that's sort of different here compared to the Super V bag that we were talking about is that sort of subtlety where the Super V bag is sort of brash and in your face and quite ugh, V, gold, bing, bang, boom. I do enjoy the fact that these V sling and V logo pieces sort of have the V much smaller. They're much more subdued, they're much more subtle, and they don't have a color on them that sort of stands out from the rest of the piece. We have it in pink, and you can see the little V logo sort of at the top. You still have the idea of the V logo being the sort of flap that opens and, you know, on the front of a shoe here, but at the same time, it's built into the bag. It's not a totally different piece. It's not like it takes center stage. It's really, really, subtle here. And I think the fact that 10 Magazine shot exclusively these sort of subtle versions of the V logo pieces is actually quite nice because you get to see that in reality, it is quite demure. It does sort of play into this idea of luxury that's sort of hidden or much more quiet instead of loud and brash and in your face. In a weird way, the 10 Magazine quotes from their section of the book is discussing symbols and it says, they present themselves alone, but more often in coherent, complex systems, communities of symbols, cities of symbols, even empires made up of symbols to explore. And in a weird way, I mean, Valentino Gadavani was called the emperor which might play into the idea of discussing empires. But before Valentino contacted me to discuss the book, I sort of was like, oh, the V logo, who gives a shit? It's a logo, it is what it is. And I think we all know how I feel about logos, but actually getting to go to the Valentino store in New York, doing a fitting and sort of discussing with one of the managers there, the history of the brand, and also getting to really understand the importance of craftsmanship to the brand, as well as that these symbols are not just things used to make money, but rather they're things that are actually really important. I mean, the V logo, again, it's been around for quite some time and has been reimagined before, but it's nice to see that Pier Paolo has taken it and sort of sleeked it down in a way that doesn't feel very 1970s graphic like we saw it originally. So in a way, there is a sort of complexity to a brand's logo in the ecosystem of the brand and how it presents itself to the world. Am I learning about that? Yes. Is it something that I necessarily wanna hear? Probably not, but it's just 
good to know. Now, as I said earlier, I am a very big fan of the idea of these sketches that are done by fashion designers. And one of my favorite shoots comes from Antidote magazine. And before we actually get to see that image, which is very iconic in my opinion, there is actually a sketch by Pierre Paolo here of a model in a beautiful strapless red gown with red gloves and red sort of hair, which I can only imagine is some crazy headpiece thought up by Pier Paolo's team, as well as a little V logo bag. And the thing is, I think Pier Paolo's work is very much so about imagination. It is otherworldly and fantastical and something that only a mastermind could really think up. But I like the fact that we're actually getting to see a sketch because it's sort of the most raw aspect of imagination. I don't think clothing in illustrations and sketches are necessarily confined by the ideas of how a fabric moves or how it stands or how it can be cut and how it can be sewn. In reality, it's like the purest form of the imagination. So when you get to see a sketch by Pier Paolo in this book, you're sort of like, <gasps> Oh my God, this is like imagination in its purest thought and form. And I love that. But let's talk about this shoot. It is stunning. I love it. And I have to say, when I first saw the image, I sort of was almost like taken aback by the queerness. The brand has sort of accepted this queerness, but it's not only just accepted the queerness, it's sort of embraced it. The V logo is literally one of the most iconic logos from the brand. And it's sitting on next to queer bodies and I'm obsessed with it. I mean, there are the V sling bags covering models genitals in a way that isn't like raunchy, but rather it's quite polite and sweet and lovely. I mean, the V logo belts are sort of being reinterpreted as chokers or even headbands. And like, honestly, the V logo headband is something I kind of want. I feel like it's a belt that's sort of been tied around the model's head in a way to reinterpret the belt, but a V logo headband would do Blair Waldorf a world of good. And while I don't know these models' genders or their sexual orientations or anything like that, I, I just, as a queer person, can sort of see and feel a queerness come coming from them. And in a way, Pier Paolo has been a very sort of early advocate of the idea of diversity and inclusion since he's been a solo creative director at Valentino. And it's nice to see that sort of not just shown on a runway or not just shown, you know, on the red carpet. It's being shown as a symbol and as a part of the brand. And I think as a queer person, getting to see that is really, really, really nice. I think a lot of the times brands don't want to associate with queer people or are afraid that it'll affect their image or affect how customers perceive them. And a brand sort of openly embracing that without screaming, hey, we're addressing queer people is actually, it's just affirming. It, it's sort of, you know, putting the action in place. And I feel like it's lovely to see that that queerness can be accepted and embraced and put forth by a brand wholeheartedly. And it's not something that's being done as a PR stunt or being done as a way of making themselves look better. It's just very genuine. One other thing that we actually get to see is that a model who has slicked down baby hairs as well as a mustache and sort of beard actually has had Pier Paolo draw and sketch over their photo, which again, sort of leads me to believe that Pier Paolo is not just doing this for like his own sort of looking betterness in press and the public. It's actually something that he genuinely seems to feel strongly enough about where he took an image and sort of sketched a beautiful asymmetrical ruffle sort of gown and V logo bag in the model's hand. In a way, I think a lot of people of power might just say things people wanna hear in order to get their approval. But in a weird way, a lot of people expect action. And I feel like putting a pen to paper in this regard is that sort of action, at least to me. And it's sort of something I hope that we see a lot more from Valentino. I hope we see more queer models maybe on the runways or in ad campaigns for the brand. Hopefully that's my uh, expectation next for Valentino. And I don't know, I just think this is a really beautiful image. And if Pier Paolo wanted to draw me in a gown, I would be very happy. And then Common Sense Magazine actually shot a lot of the V sling bags in more of like a still life style, which 
I actually think is really, really beautiful because you get to see the up close details of the actual pieces. Like you get to see really the depth of, you know, the stitching in the bags, or you get to see like the beautiful leather that is on it and the way that the leather shines in the light. I mean, one of these bags is actually shot by itself. And if you think about it, the Valentino Rosso, which in Italian means red, is a signature color of the brand. Like they're usually in a Valentino collection, you see, red and in a way getting to just shoot this you know bag by itself in that beautiful red is maybe a tribute to the history of Valentina while also reinterpreting and you know shooting a modern sort of bag by Pier Paolo. We actually get to see a couple of these Super V fanny packs which putting Super V and fanny pack together maybe isn't necessarily the best combination of words I've ever had but you actually again get to see really the details of the bags like the stitching is it's sexy, it's hot, like I'd lick it. And then you really do get to see the shine of the Super V silver buckles. I'm gonna call them buckles. I can promise you that there's like a weight to it and there's like a beauty to that weight. Like it's heavy and there's a gorgeousness to that heaviness and I really love it. And I think that in a way, if you're shooting this V logo, it's nice to actually see like the product shot wonderfully. It's not under the arm of a model or it's not, you know, done in these crazy ways, which is fine. I don't mind seeing that. It's fun to reinterpret those sort of pieces, but to really just shoot them in a beautiful way for them to be appreciated just as a product, I think is a smart thing for Valentino. I don't find Valentino to be a brand that wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, here's a bunch of shit that we made. It does genuinely seem like a brand that cares about the craftsmanship of it, even down to the point where even the ready to wear, which is meant to be sort of mass produced, is a lot of the time handmade, hand stitched. It has aspects of it that are hand done. I mean, my jacket, actually the V isn't stitched on it. It's hand woven in a loom. That seems like a lot of work. Now, Days China and Days Korea and Days UK all sort of took very creative liberties when it came to the styling of their shoots. And in reality, I love to be able to see stylists reinterpret garments in their own ways. I think for a lot of publications, there is a real sort of driving factor of taking a look from the runway and putting it on a page or putting it on a model or a celebrity and saying, this is the shoot. But the fact that Valentino, again, allowed this sort of open interpretation and artistic -y freedom to sort of come about is where you get creativity like this and you see, you know, these V logo belts as chokers or you see them as tops, which like, honestly, love that. I'm hoping that Pier Paolo is paying attention and saying, oh, oh, a V logo belt as a top? I could do that for fall 2021. Something else that I am absolutely obsessed with is the quotes from this whole section by Dazed where one of the quotes says, every community is creative because every community writes its own language. And I think the idea of appreciating people and where they come from and their lifestyles and their languages and their culture and their art is something that at least for me as an American is sort of new. But at the same time, there's a beauty to sort of learning about different cultures and realizing that your own culture is not the center of the universe. And that's something as an American I've had to do a lot recently. And in a way, I'm happy to see that Valentino is also sort of putting that message out there and hopefully taking that message in internally as well. It sort of gives me hope that fashion brands in the future sort of shed this whitewashed and classist identity that they've had for the longest time and see that different interpretations of their brands from different people aren't always a bad thing, but rather they're only gonna make their brands a lot stronger. Also, I mean, this model with this sword that's put into like a V logo sort of sheath is really hot. And also like, I would hope that any future sword users are getting their Super V bags as uh, holsters. There is a sketch of uh, a bearded, model wearing a Valentino hat and V logo earrings and what I assume are some V logo sunglasses. And honestly, like I would grow a beard and a mustache for that to be me. But the last image that we will discuss is from Purple Magazine. And again, there's a sort of queerness to the image, a beautiful V logo pump and a V logo sling bag and hat and V logo shirt is all sort of brought together on a bearded and mustached model. And again, I find that there is this sort of 
embracing of queerness and embracing of difference and embracing of different values and ideas and looks and styles. And I think Pure Paolo is sort of on the right track and Valentino as a whole is on the right track. Even going into the Valentino store in New York, the way that the sales associates were dressed was not this sort of very rigid idea of gender and class put into play. Rather, it was very open and open to interpretation and open to different ideals and new ways of expressing yourself. And in a way, it sort of made me feel a lot more comfortable. I didn't feel like, oh, if I was in the women's section, I would be looked at strangely. I felt like rather that seems very normal here and something that for me, at least as a queer person who, you know, sometimes wears what are considered women's garments, I didn't feel alienated or I didn't feel that I would feel alienated in that regard. And again, I think that only bolsters Valentino as a brand is that they accept their customers and people that are not necessarily their customers as people and live freely as you want. And I do think that's kind of very important. The final quote that we'll sort of discuss here is the evolution of a meaning is an explosion of wonder. I'll be honest, it's easy to look at the V logo and say, oh, it's boring, it's banal, it's basic. And I'll be honest, I've sat there and I've said that myself. But honestly, as I sat down to sort of research and learn the history of not only the V logo, but Valentino as a brand, I've sort of come to realize that it's such a historical part of the brand and part of the branding and a symbol of the brand. I mean, even the Valentino offices in Rome have a big V over them. It's actually kind of amazing. I've come to actually appreciate the V logo. It's something that at some point can be very subtle and understated and goes under the radar. And at the other side of the spectrum can be brash and outlandish and over the top and in your face. And I guess in a way that's what a good logo should be. It should be open to the interpretation of that person that's wearing it to tell their own story. And I think we heard a little bit about, you know, the meaning of a logo is for storytelling. And in a way this logo and Valentino and Pier Paolo's interpretation and reinterpretation of it has allowed a customer to have a much bigger part in the storytelling of the brand and the expression of themselves and their own stories. I also feel that Pier Paolo with this book has sort of shown that the V logo isn't something that is just gonna stay stagnant or just gonna stay something that is about making money or is just a product. Rather, it's sort of a big part of the brand and something that will be interpreted further in the future. And that only excites me as now I have a much bigger appreciation for it and I'll be looking out for it because now I know the history of it. In a way, the book sort of seems to be a study to me of how to honor the past and the brand's sort of DNA and its signatures and tropes through the reinterpretation of the V logo. But at the same time, how that logo and how its history needs to be executed in a more modern time and in a more modern and, you know, youthful and different environment. It's sort of like seeing a historical artifact evolve with the times rather than just staying an artifact. Like there, there are artifacts out there and it definitely does honor its own history, but it's allowing itself to change with the times. And I think more now than ever, especially in the year 2020, there's a lot of change that needs to happen. And there's a lot of change that is slowly but surely happening. And it seems like Valentino is very much so embracing that change and that evolution and that sort of update. And I highly recommend the book. Not only do you get to see Pier Paolo's sketches and thoughts, but you also get to see a lot of interpretations and beautiful imagery that you might not be able to see in other places, as well as actual like thought provoking ideas of what a logo means and why it should stay around and why it is important. Cause honestly, I learned quite a lot about Valentino through doing the research and doing fittings and feeling a part of the brand and getting to see it up close and personal, which I personally feel is only gonna make 
my reviews of the brand stronger. It's only gonna make my understanding of the history and the brand's products and the craftsmanship that the brand sort of brings forth stronger. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Tell me about Valentino and the book and the V logo. If you love it, if you hate it, if you want to learn more about it, if you want a video on the history of Valentino, if you want to see more interpretations of Pure Paolo's work in the future, I want to hear all about it. So again, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and TTYL.